Brooklyn Nets, are they just looking forward to April at this point? I'm ready for the Ben Simmons revival tour. I mean, what else do you have to look forward to in the Barclays Center besides like J. Cole concerts and all that stuff? Because, I mean, if we're looking at it, the Nets, this is a development year. Like, you're not playing for anything besides losing. That's it. You're trying to play to lose so you can get in the running for Cooper Flag. I think no, that's, that's the it. elephant in the room. That's it. That's the only thing that you're trying to do. There are three people you're playing for if you're in that spot away. Well, okay. It's not it's not a one minute. I don't think I don't think Cooper's a slam dunk. It's all I'm saying. I don't think it's a slam dunk Cooper going number one. As, as much as I love Cooper, I don't think it's a slam dunk because Ace is Oh, we, we do have to talk about that. But finish Miles, because I'd love to hear who is a part of that three that you're saying. There's three I mean, guys. I think it's yeah, it's Cooper, it's Dylan Harper, and then it's Ace from Rutgers. So the rack is going to be jumping this year. They're going to look really nice in the NIT. Um, but those two players, they're going to make a lot of people want to come to New Jersey to watch them play because it's special. We haven't had talent like this in New Jersey in a long time, maybe not since the Nets left. Um, so I'm really excited to see what they do. I think Dylan Harper is a special talent. Uh, one of those score first point guards and then ace. Um, I don't have any jokes for ace, but I think he could honestly be picked ahead of Cooper just off of the athletic build. And I think he's raw, but there's a lot of things there that you can work with. And who knows? It's a long season. I'd love, I wish they had uh, Duke and Rutgers playing this year, but I don't know if they they read into that. Why not Kentucky versus Rutgers? <laughs> you, even you don't want to see your team on TV. <laughs> We're talking about the top three players. What? I'm not talking about that. You're trying to be messy. All right. <laughs> Tom, were you about to say something? No, I was going to say I agree. They obviously, Rutgers obviously thinks that they're going to win every single game and go to the final four because um I got credentials to go work the Rutgers women's game. But the Rutgers men oh. said Rutgers men said no. So obviously they think they're gonna be they're too they're too above for a freelancer podcaster. So we'll yeah. see if it actually turns to be out that way. Over wow. under for the wins and you you'll go after this. You say your piece. I just want to throw it out there. They have it that y'all going to win 19 and a half games. That's pretty low. I mean, <laughs> that's that's pretty low. I'm, they have No, 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 no. Okay, they're idiots. Unless they trade Dorian and Cam uh, Johnson, I don't see how that's possible. I'll be honest, because they have too many guys that are winning players in the league. Like, those two guys can help you win some games. They can get hot a couple nights. They're going to win like 25 games. All right. They're going to win like 25 games. And by the way, losing as many games as possible, as as great as it sounds in theory, the NBA got rid of the whole, it's, it's not the NFL, you know, template. It's not like that. So it doesn't really help you. You just get a couple more ping pong balls. But rarely does a team, does a team with the most ping pong balls ever get the number one pick. Detroit Pistons is your example for the last X amount of years being as bad as they've been. They don't, they never get the number one pick. They get number five or eight. It, it, you know what I mean? So you really can't, you can't look at it that way. Uh, you really can't. I mean, you hope to get a high draft pick. There's a lot of good players in this draft um, as well. And I, I don't know if you wanted me to get into this, you know, here, but a lot, there's a lot of good players in this draft as well. So, you know, it's not a one guy draft where you're getting, it's like the unicorn is Cooper and there's no one else. I think that unicorn is aces and is a unicorn. And I think Dylan is a very, 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 very good prospect. I don't know that I call him a unicorn. We've seen his build before, but I'm really high on Dylan uh, as a scorer and a feel for the game guy who can make passes as well and, and play at a high level. So I, I like Dylan a lot. Um, so I think the two Rockers guys in Coop and then also my man over in Baylor, uh, VJ Edgecombe. Uh, who's going to be special as well. I really believe that his athletic ability is one thing, but um, these guys are more skilled than they have been in the past, which is why when he said, when Miles said Ace is a little is a little raw, there, there's some truth to that, but Ace is a little more skilled than people give him credit for too. I think he's going to show you some stuff this year. He's going to have a real breeze playing college basketball. I just kind of see him 
walking into 20 points <laughs> pretty, pretty quick. Uh, he's, he's that talented of a guy in transition, uh, in half-court games, and getting post touches. There's so many ways as a slasher playing off of Dylan. There's just so many ways they can hurt you and have them both. They're going to be tough to guard. That team's as a tournament team for sure. I think they're going to be, um, you know, one of those like, you know, just for a bubble teams like they get in. I think they're going to get in though. Good year for Rutgers, especially with the football team. Which, by the way, I told y'all, told y'all, man, four and zero, four and zero, about to be five and zero, beating little little uh, Mahomes Jr. By the way. But the Nets, the, the Nets are, yeah. This is a development year for them. Let's see what they can trade Cam and get value for him and trade Dorian to get value for him. Uh, but 25 wins, I think, is very fair. And I think I think what you have to watch for if you're a Nets fan, development of Cam Cam Thomas, right? Is he a more efficient scorer under the situation? Can he can he be that? And also the development of uh, Nick Claxton and where his game goes. Uh, I'm not interested in Ben Simmons and the robot. What, what are we talking about? He won't be here past this year. But, it, you know, just get through this year, Nets fans. You'll be all right. Find something else to watch.